Hey guys, so I was watching a video by the professor on the master series and it was a 18 minute video. It's a very good video. So I will go ahead and say I agree with him. His, his point is very simple that this set could have been a master 25 set and the set was perfect. It is a perfect gift, a perfect holiday gift. The only problem was the price, and that is a huge problem. When I buy stuff, it is dependent on if I think it's a good value or not. A lot of Magic players are value hunters, and therefore they're not going to just buy, throw money at their local game store. They're going to look at prices. They're going to assess whether or not they need the cards, how much they can get singles. Magic players have evolved a since the last 20 years, they know they are no longer in a convention center making up prices and the old age old question, what do you value this at, can be answered at TCG mids without even picking up your phone. And if they're still interested, then you trade them TCG mids for TCG mids. So the main problem is the price point. The price point is too high. I've read a lot of comments when people suggest that this product is not for everybody. Yes, the product is not for everybody because literally no, everybody cannot afford this product. But the product could have been for everybody. Uh, one of the other criticisms that has been laid out on my previous videos is yeah, we need reprints and we don't wanna tank the price. We, I've always said, hey, if you just say modern, it's going to be reprinted into Oblivion. And we all know modern will be reprinted into Oblivion. Just look at Tamagoy, $400 to $67, $65 now, and he's getting a, another reprint. This should be red flags to any, quote, investor that I probably should not invest in this. And that's the majority of the problem is you have speculation. As I've said in previous videos... The speculation, the, the issue is not me or you speculating on cards, because honestly, how many cards can I possibly buy? It took me two years to buy 120 copies of Philia. And that was two years of intensively buying. It takes a store like Star City Games two hours to buy every single fetch land, every single Zendikar fetch land from $10 and $15, and then boost up the price to $100. So in terms of volume, the stores, Star City Games, Channel Fireball, Card Kingdom, they have so much buying power. They have 10,000, 10,000 times the buying power I do. So if they want to manipulate the markets, which I believe they are doing, they can manipulate the markets. An individual investor who's treating this as a hobby and buys four or eight copies of it, that does nothing to the market. Unless it's like four to eight copies of a Black Lotus, right? So this should have been a product for everybody. And it is a product for the extremely wealthy. Now, a lot of you will say, oh, I'll just wait to buy singles. I'll just wait to buy singles. Open your trade binder right now. Tell me how many singles of any master set you currently own. I guarantee you the majority of new players do not have this many singles. Because... If you watch me on YouTube, you are not the majority of Magic players. If you go to a GP, you are in the one percentile of Magic players. 99% of Magic players out of those millions of Magic players, 48% of them being female, they never go to a GP. They never watch a YouTube video, regardless of who the YouTube content creator is. They never, they don't even, when I... If they watch a video and I'm talking about Wedge McJr. Cheeseburger, they have no idea what that means. They think it's an actual cheeseburger because this is the first video on YouTube. The majority of people who play Magic do not go on Reddit and complain about everything they, there's to complain about. The majority of Magic players are not on Twitter. If there are millions of Magic players and the largest Magic channel, which is Tolerance, only has a, hundred, a few hundred thousand then you're losing a gap, right? That's like a small percentage of the supposed 20 million Magic players are, that are out there. They're getting hosed. And let me tell you how, how it works. 
Initially, I was going to make a video on, of course, my favorite uh, McCheeseburger. And maybe I'll go into the economics of that because it really breaks down to the fact that uh, there's no, if, if we assume that we're in a zero sum game and some people have to lose for other people to win, which I think Magic is right now. Uh, Magic is an adversary game. You're not working with your opponent to both win the game. You have to defeat your opponent if you're Alex Pacini by cheating. And then, you know, via cheating, you can win prizes. And so it's like everyone, let's pull out $50 or right now $100. Let's pull it in a prize pool. And then we have to beat each other up to see who wins the money. That's what it is, right? That's what poker is. And that's what magic is. Although magic tries to hide the quote gambling aspect a little bit better. The same with opening a pack. If you open a pack, you can either win, you can plus, or you can go down. It's a zero sum game in my opinion. And by doing this, you are isolating, you are isolating the majority of the player base who are not going to buy this product. And let me give you a story to explain it. There's, there used to be a guy who came into the comic store. It's called DNA Comics. When I first got here, it was 120 people at pre-release. It has not carried Magic for a year or two yet now because Magic is not worth the money. He would come here and he would bring his binders, hundreds of thousand dollars of Magic cards to trade, basically to shark people, to take advantage of people. And he wouldn't play at any events. He wouldn't do pre-release, but he would go there and show off his collection. And it made him, well, in his opinion, it made him very popular. So he was showing off his collection. He was saying how cool he was. And he was very arrogant about this. This is what these masterpieces represent to me. They re represent a ability for Magic players with more money to rub it in the face of Magic players who don't have as much money. No one should be paying $300 plus dollars for a box. Now, I will address the other argument. I bought this box for $220 from my local game store. Ha ha ha. I bought it for $240. Your local game store does not know how much it's going to get. So if your local game store, remember, this is a distribution product only. There's no guarantees here. It's based on your distribution. So let me explain that again. Direct order from Wizard of Coast, which guarantees smaller stores a set amount of product like this, set amount of boxes and cases, no longer exist. Those people have been fired. Now you need to order from distributor. What say you that these distributors get together and say, hey, you know what? I think this is a very valuable product. Let's hold on to it. They did this before. They did it before. So I'm glad that your local game store is taking pre-orders a month in advance and tying up your money. But just like when I buy anime figures, let me give you an example. There's an $800 anime figure that I own. My friend loves it. C is in love with it. It's the giant bikini anime figure that I don't, if you watch my old videos, you'll see. I've never watched it, the anime series, but it's, um, the series is called My Sister Can't Possibly Be That Cute. So it's the main character, and it is a eight hundred dollar uh, thing. So he put down a deposit for uh, six hundred dollars, so we got a price reduction because it was reissued. They canceled it after tying up her money for a year and a half. You don't know until you get that box in your hand. You don't know if your two forty is good, and until that point, you two you two forty you can put it in the stock market. You can put it in Bitcoin. There's value to having cash. And there's value for that store because that store can take the cash flow and pay employees or make rent. So it's not as easy as a lot of people are saying, oh, well, my store sells it for 240. They're going to take care of all the locals. I guarantee you something bad is going to happen because distributors are a nightmare to work with. I work with one right now, not for magic, but for Pokemon stuff. And occasionally, I'm able to order lots of really old sets, but they're at eBay prices. So I'm like, mm. the distributor is interested in making the most money possible. They don't give a blank about your local game store. And if a bigger game store buys them out, or a Rudy, a Rudy, an alpha investment, goes to that distributor and says, I want these boxes early, and I want to open them 
for my patrons a week ahead of schedule, which is what he does. Guess where all those boxes go to? They go to Rudy. They don't go to your local game store because he has buying power. The same with Channel Fireball. So, like, I'm going to dispel this. This product should be for everybody. It's not for everybody, which is a shame. If this product was called Masters 25, I would say, wow, they really hit a home run on this. At this point in time, I don't want people to say, oh, my collection. If your collection is in modern, you are dumb dumb. You dumb dumb. Because everyone and their grandmother knows Tamagotchi will be reprinted another time and another time and another time. And they said this is the last master set for a while. My goodness, it's not even the last master set this year. <laughs> like, I guarantee you that we'll have some conspiracy or, I mean, man, it, it's appalling to me that one of the biggest reasons people want a high price point is they feel like it will protect their collection somehow. At this point in time, your modern collection has zero value. I view my modern collection, although it's very nice and I have many Liliana and avails for personal reasons. I don't expect that to ever go up. I only expect it to go down. Remember that foil Lily I gave away when, when, it, when I made the contest two and a half years ago, that foil Lily was $250. When I gave it away two years or a few months ago, maybe one or two months ago, that card was still $250. Are you kidding me? This is the best Planeswalker in modern in original foil. How does it stay at 250 for all this time? It doesn't make any sense. I, when I pulled it out of booster pack, it was 250 and Innistrad packs were four or five dollars. You could get them at Walmart in those two packs. Now Innistrad packs are $13. And I, I cannot pull a Lily, a regular Lily to save my life now. And I've been trying. I have been trying. So, man, it is, it's baffling to me how anyone can expect to uh, their collection, should it be modern and standard, to have to be safe. No, we should just assume that our collections are worth zero in modern and standard. And if we want to buy reserve list cards, that's fine because that goes up. And I don't think that's going to go down that much because there's a limited amount. But there will always be more Tamagoyf. There's always be more Lilies. The reason that Lily at 250 is still 250 today, original Innistrad foil. Over two and a half years. Do you, you think this is a gold? Do you think this card is made from gold or something? It's because they reprinted it twice. They had two. They had the uh, regional promo, the foil lily, and then they had the modern masters li lily, which also came in foil. So that's magic. I, I have, if I have to get another foil lily, it will be because... I like the card, not because I hope it comes $1,000 one day. It will never be $1,000. Because as soon as it hits, you know, 400 it will get a reprint. The foil. I, I mean, it, as soon as Lily hits over, over 100 reprint. See, it's getting a reprint right now. The same with Snap. Snap was also a regional promo, and he was in Modern Masters 2017, and now he's reprinted again. Life from the Loam, like, was in a dual deck. Now it's getting reprinted again. Creeping Tar Pit being reprinted. And Zomi, according to uh, Mana Source, $15. Great investment. We should buy all the Creeping Tar Pits right before they get released from the reprints. I'm sure that the uh, extra supply, the massive inflow supply from a card that's never been reprinted, and the only reason it's so expensive is because it's scarcity, not because it's actually that great, will help. Anyway, my point is very simple. Like, I agree with Tolarian Community College on this issue because he's right. They could have made a good product. They chose not to. I don't even know if it's financially a good decision. I think, fin I think financially, if you count the numbers, it's actually better to sell more product at a lower cost than fewer product and inflate it. The, the product is perfect. I don't want you guys to say that they chose all the cards that needed to be reprinted. All the expensive cards are pretty much there. But the price point is unbearable. Um, and if anyone wants to protect their collection, I will tell you you should sell right now because it's not ever going to get better. 
if you have modern and standard, your cards will only go down in price. Yeah, occasionally your Mox Opal will survive and it'll be like $100, but guess what? Mox Opal reprint incoming. It was actually reprinted in the one of the Modern Masters. I'm surprised it's not here yet. But anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.